Good Friday morning, dear friends, Clearview family, whoever may be listening today. And we're so glad that you have decided to join with us today for our Friday morning devotion time. It's such a privilege to be able to come back together with you. I've changed locations today. Uh, I am at the Clearview Baptist Church, uh, one of the most beautiful places on the face of God's green earth. And it's even more beautiful today. Look. That steeple is shining like the sun. I am so thankful for the great work that has been done around here at the church building. It's been a very productive week and exciting to see uh, some things happen in preparation for Sunday. Uh, when the time that we're going to be able to come back together and worship here inside the walls. It's been a great experience to take worship outside, uh, out in, in the parking lot. But uh, this building is a special place set aside for the worship of God. And, and hey, men and women had that vision years ago. And we're so thankful that God placed that on their heart. And today it's, it's still actively being used to worship the God of heaven. Hey, so listen, with the psalmist, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So let's do that this morning. I invite you and welcome you right into the house of God today. Welcome. Clearview Baptist Church here at our brand new Welcome Center. We're so excited to be able to join together. Could we pray and then we will look into God's word for just a few moments this morning. Father, we're so thankful for the good day you've given to us. We're thankful for your mercy, your grace that is everlasting and new Lord, even today on this beautiful Friday, we're so thankful that we can come together with our dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. We can open up the infallible and errant word of God and we can learn and glean and know more about who you are. I pray today that you have blessed the, the dear ones that are watching and listening uh, by way of the Internet, Facebook, wherever they may be. I pray, Father, for your blessings on their day. Uh, I pray, God, that you would be with them and encourage them in the things of the Lord. Lord, we're looking forward to Sunday. We're excited about the opportunity, the prospect of being able to come back into this place. I pray your blessings upon Sunday. I pray for every song. I pray, God, for our pastor as he opens the word of God. He preaches your word. I pray that you would encourage him, give him those words that we stand most in need of. And may we be eternally changed. Uh, for your honor and your praise. Save that soul, we pray, even today, that is nearest hell. We ask God that you'd, you'd move upon their heart. We know that you are, and we know you desire to seek and to save all those which are lost today. We pray if there's somebody listening by way this morning to my voice, that they would not hear me, for I have nothing other, Lord, than the great and mighty word of God to bring to them. I have nothing of my own. Lord, I simply bring to them the words that are found in your word. And I pray, God, that it would make an eternal change in, in that individual's heart today. We pray, ask and pray these things for your glory, for your honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That psalm is found in chapter 122 of God's word. It's the very first verse. And it's the third psalm of a collection of psalms that are moving, psalms that are traveling, psalms that are going somewhere, psalms of ascent, as they are labeled. I love these psalms. I enjoy so much reading. reading. It makes me think of moving to a higher ground, such as the steeple that we just saw, something that is set high. That's exactly what these psalms are intended to do for you. 
And for me to move us to a higher place makes me think of that. Hey, makes me think of this. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Remember that song? He goes, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table and a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Love that song. That's exactly what the songwriter was mentioning when he wrote those words. Moving to a higher place. We haven't really gotten to speak much about this in, uh, in the last several months because of, hey, we came back to church and boom, uh, from Israel, and then we were out of church. But quickly, I remember when we landed in Tel Aviv, we boarded a bus and began our, our journey. It was just maybe an hour and a half, two hours over to Jerusalem. I'll, I'll never forget turning to Michelle on that bus ride and saying, oh, hey, my ears are popping. And I thought, why are my ears popping? I was not expecting my ears to start popping. But I learned quickly that we were, we were ascending on that bus ride. That Jerusalem is actually a city that is really set on a hill. It's an ascent to the place where God has placed his name. The city, the beautiful city, beautiful for situation, the Bible says. The joy of the whole earth. The city is set on a hill. My ears were popping as we ascended to that wonderful and glorious and holy city that cannot be hid. That's, that's what this psalmist is, is trying to convey to you and to me and to all of his, his, his readers. Is that we are ascending to the place where God has placed his name. It makes me think of this place right here. It's a place where God has set his name. It's a place that has been ordained and has been anointed that we could come into. And we can lift our worship. And praise the true God, the God of heaven, a place that is holy and set apart. The psalmist says in chapter 122 that he was glad. And I want to join and say, I am glad also. I am glad that I am able to come into the house of the Lord. It's a language of happiness. Such should be our language today. Joy and happiness that we are able to come back into the house of the Lord. Notice the psalmist says he really is not even there. He said, I'm just glad that they're mentioning that we're going to be able to go into the house of the Lord. I'm glad that they said we're going to meet there. I'm happy to get there. He was happy to go and worship. How about you today? Are you are you happy? Are you glad that worship is going to be possible with your brothers and sisters here in this building this Sunday? Is, is worship for you a 30 minute song set on a Sunday? Well, even a Sunday morning, some could not even think about coming back Sunday night. Is worship just a 30 minute song set? Is worship a favorite concert of yours? Uh, maybe Worship is something that you put on and take off like a favorite jacket or a, a favorite T-shirt. If, if so, if that's what worship is, then friend, you've got the wrong idea of what worship really means. Worship for the Christian should be our highest occupation. Nothing should take its place. Worship is the top. I've heard it described this way. Imagine a man drowning in the ocean and he, he comes up just enough to cry out, Lord, please save me. That is his prayer. God, please save me. That is a prayer. God reaches down his hand and he pulls that man up out of the ocean. His prayer turns into praise. Oh God, thank you for saving me. Prayer, praise quickly turns to worship. And here's worship, friend. 
Worship is when you understand that only there is none other, nobody else could save you but God. And you look at him and you say, thank you for saving me for nobody else could save me but you. That is worship. So today, as you contemplate and you prepare your heart, as these psalm do, in ascending to the place where God places his name, consider, do a self-evaluation. Am I glad? Am I happy? Or am I content not to go to the house of the Lord? Don't get me wrong. I understand there are psalm this Sunday that are still uncomfortable with coming out, and we all understand that. I'm not speaking of that. Uh, there's going to be a day soon when every individual, no matter your age or your condition, you're going to be able to come and walk back into this place. And I know you'll be happy and glad of that day. But I'm speaking to that individual who's well-bodied, able to come this Sunday. Are you glad that you're able to come back to worship in the house of, the God, of God? Can I hear you say, Amen. Dear Clearview, I love you. I'm so thankful for the opportunity, the prospect. And the joy that is going to be our experience this Sunday at 845 or at 11 as we come together and worship the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Have a blessed day and I look forward to seeing you on this Sunday. Be praying, be expecting, be prepared as we come together and worship him. I'll see you Sunday. Love you.